Spinner River Swamp is one of the world's most unique ecosystems. Over the years, the swamp has been negatively affected by human activity. The Nariva Swamp Restoration, Carbon Sequestration and Livelihoods Project is an initiative to restore degraded areas of the Nariva Swamp. This current project is just another chapter in the quest to address the tremendous damage done to critical areas of the Nariva Swamp. Many of you would also know that this damage was a result of clearing of the swamp vegetation for rice farming, cutting of channels for irrigation for rice fields in the area known as Block B, clearing of a planned forest for agricultural and residential squatting, and burning of the swamp to access interior fish stock. So we are dealing with many, many issues which have impacted negatively on the swamp area. From the beginning, it was evident that achieving success in the river would be no small feat. That's why there was an all-hands-on-deck approach to managing the project. The Environmental Management Authority sees itself as being very fortunate to take its turn at providing leadership for the restoration efforts for the area. We are pleased to be working through our line ministry, the Ministry of Housing and the Environment, and to have the support of our line minister, Dr. Rudal Munilal. Together with, other, with our other partners, the community groups within the Nariva area, the Forestry Division, who is one of the main players with regards to this particular project, the Green Fund Executing Unit, the University of the West Indies, who are actually contributing to the research efforts with regards to carbon sequestration. Minister of Housing and the Environment, Dr. Rudal Munilal, was also in high praise for the executing agencies. I would also like to commend all the partners involved in this project as it provides a good model for interagency and stakeholder collaboration. I'm also very excited that it, is all, that it also involves the collaborative efforts among three of my ministry's agencies, the EMA, Forestry and the Green Fund. And even at this very early juncture, one can understand the wisdom of the Honourable Prime Minister in placing these several agencies under one umbrella ministry. The main intention of the EMA's role is to provide leadership and to build capacity of the community-based organisations. This is a fundamental tenant, I would say, of the, of the project and indeed one of the conditions in which the Green Fund uh, assigned monies to the EME to lead this initiative to ensure that the community-based organizations and their capacity was built in the process so that in the future these groups can take more leadership role in terms of the, uh, the exercises and activities that we engage in. There's not very much sense in engaging in this level of activity with this level of funding at the end of the day not having opportunities provided to the members of the community itself. So this has really been viewed as one of the key outputs of the project. These benefits will not only be limited to the specific groups working on the project, but also to many of the surrounding villages. According to the minister, there are many avenues through which communities can get involved. This Nariva project, if implemented properly, will give Trinidad and Tobago global visibility as a committed member of the green global economy on four levels. Firstly, the replanting of almost 1,300 hectares of, de of degraded land with native species will demonstrate our commitment to environmental restoration in a sustainable manner. Secondly, the integration of the communities as the chief source of labor and skill demonstrates the project's commitment to community engagement and livelihood generation. Thirdly, the Nariva project has dedicated significant resources to community and public awareness and education and will focus on issues pertaining to sustained use of the resource. Fourth, this flagship project represents Trinidad and Tobago's first entry into the carbon market where the gains from new human-induced forest growth represent carbon stock that can be monetized on the international carbon market and enhance revenue generation. According to Dr. Singh, the value of this project is not only about dollars and cents, but leaving a living, lasting legacy for future generations. 
this is not a project in terms of what you can get, but what you can be, because it has so much potential for growth in terms of the Nariva area, um, the Nariva area strengthened, supported, restored, and so that the area can be something else and members of the community and community groups can be something else as well. Thank you.